armor toy. And I decided in my little mind that I was not going to school that year. Well, it came Christmas time, and Christmas time of that particular year when I was six years old, uh, the little wooden blackboards with the ABCs and the numbers on the top of it was very popular. And so I wanted me one of those little blackboards, and my mama wrote this little letter on this blackboard, and it says, Dear Nathaniel, I have brought you this blackboard, but if you don't go to school, I'm coming back and get it. Now, hold on a minute. Did six years old, I could not read what was on that blackboard. I played with my other toys, but I did not touch that blackboard. And when Mom got up, she, I said, Mama, Mama, look here. Santa Claus left me a message on my little blackboard. And here she began to read, Dear Nathaniel, I have brought you this blackboard, but if you do not go to school, I am coming back and get it. Folks, I looked at my mom at six years old and said, call him right now and tell him to come on back and get it. And I never played with that blackboard. But right then and there, I knew something wrong with this Santa stuff because if Santa was so faithful and he was going to give a gift, he wouldn't come back and get it. And see, the next thing about the false god of Christmas is Santa is immutable, unchanging over time. See, yesterday, today, forever, Santa is the same. He never seems to change. He is always happy. He is always jolly. He's unchanging. The same way that Jesus, and this is why I call this message tonight, the false god of Christmas, because Jesus will never change. Hebrews 13a, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's an unchanging God. So we put in the false god of Christmas that Santa Claus is unchangeable. Yesterday, today, forever is the same. He, is, he never seems to change. He is always happy. He is always jolly. And the next fifth thing I want to bring out, Santa is good. Santa showers his blessings to all. Every good and perfect gift comes from Santa. He is the supreme giver of Christmas. The supreme giver of Christmas. We covered that the false god of Christmas, Santa is omniscient. Santa is omnipresent. Santa is faithful. Santa is immutable. Santa is good. And then the next thing we all teach you know that Jesus Christ is coming back, but this false god of Christmas, Santa, is coming. Santa is coming to town. You better be ready. You better watch out. You better not pout. You better not cry. Because Santa's on the way. Bless God, he is coming. Are, are you prepared for his coming? Have you, <laughs> pray, bless God, uh, have you been off that naughty list? Are you on that good list? Are you prepared when Santa comes to reward every boy and girl according to his works? See, millions of boys and girls each year wait with expectancy for the glorious appearing of the great Santa God with eight reindeers riding flying reindeers, I'm talking about, and coming to every house and coming down to every chimney there is in the world in the same night. Now, I want to tell y'all something, folks, and you can get prepared with the world that we're living in today. Go ahead and get prepared tonight because I want you to know one thing. Jesus Christ is soon coming, and the world is in trouble tonight. And when I say the world is in trouble, uh, we got lying politicians that they don't know how to tell the truth. And if you don't believe me, listen, you've got the news media has done gone to hell in a handbasket because they don't know how to tell the truth. The news media has become a political tool for one side and left the other side out. We've got a system in the world today that is a two-system system, and that is you got laws for the good people and you got laws for the bad people. The bad people is never accounted for anything they do, and the good people go to prison. Now, you do whatever you want to with that, but I want to tell you something tonight in this false god of Christmas. Look out, all you folks, you think you've got it made. Some of you have went into politics as broke as I don't know what, and now you're a multimillionaire. And you might turn your back on God, but I want to tell you one thing tonight. One of these days, every knee is going to bow, 
and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and Jesus Christ is coming back, folks. The same way we tell our children, we tell our children Santa is coming more than we do that Jesus Christ is coming back one day. And I want us to sit on this podcast tonight and tell you, be honest with them. There's some children in the United States of America tonight that knows more about Santa Claus than they do the real meaning of Christmas. What? Merchants. All the folks out there tonight, if there have never been a Jesus that was born in a manger in Bethlehem, you wouldn't be having a Christmas anyhow. And these merchants that gets offended by the name of Jesus, but yet they don't get offended to celebrate that day by selling their goods and selling their products in the name of Christmas. Santa is coming, we tell our children, but we better be telling our children Jesus Christ is coming, and he's coming soon. Now, the next one tonight, brothers and sisters, kind of breaks my heart because not only is Santa omniscient, not only is Santa omnipresent, Santa is faithful, Santa is immutable, Santa is good, and Santa is coming. It's sad that Santa is worshipped. Santa is worshipped and loved by thousand children the world around. Children love him so much that all through the year they seek to please him so that when they see him, they will not be ashamed. What did the Bible say? Oh, come, let us adore him. Is this the God you want your children to know and love? Or do you want your children to love and know the God of the Bible that loves you and that died for you? Santa is worship for you. Think that or not. Churches has brought in the myth. Santa, uh, have you brought him into your church? Well, you just brought in a lie, okay? Yeah, okay. My email is revnat94 gmail.com. You're going to get upset with me. You're going to, all this kind of stuff. But I want to sit here tonight on this podcast with the nuggets, the nuggets of God's word. I'm giving you a nugget of God's word right now. We shall not. We should not, by Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 5, have any false god before us. We should not bow down to them. We should not worship them. But right now, I would ask every one of you tonight, to wherever you are, to just ride by just your merchants, ride by your favorite store. Go in that favorite store, but I'm going to ask you, uh, how much do you see in that store advertised? about what the real meaning of Christmas is. And the real meaning of Christmas is, is the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody got, everybody has got this Santa Claus part down pat, but a lot of folks, they have missed the point of the false god of Christmas. I want to talk to you just a few minutes about how we, as a church, how we as a people, forgot the real meaning of Christmas. You ride by some stores and they shorten up. They got Xmas. They leave leave the M-A-S on it, but they got Xmas. Now, when I was in school, I want to tell you what, when you got an X, that was wrong. That was marked out. That was the wrong answer. So why don't you get rid of the you say, well, that X represents Christ. No, it don't. See, when you take Christ out of Christmas, you don't have a Christmas. You don't have a Christmas. And when you have the false God of Christmas and you put more emphasis on the false God of Christmas than you do the real meaning of Christmas, you're worshiping the false God. So have we tonight forgot the real meaning? of what Christmas is all about. No, folks, I'm not telling you tonight to go out there, throw your Christmas trees in the yard and all this kind of stuff, but I'm just saying that we need to be honest about what this is all about. We need to look around the world and see who is getting more emphasis and on Christmas than the real meaning of Christmas, the Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, do you know him as your personal Savior? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? 
Look, folks, I want to sit here tonight on this podcast and tell you that I used to practice all these things. Yeah, when I first went into the ministry 46 years ago, we had Santa Claus to come to the church until I got convicted. And when I got convicted, folks, when you get convicted of something, you better quit it right then and there. And when I realized that I was doing something right, was not quite right because I was bringing in and showing the kids that I placed my approval on the false god of Christmas. You said, well, didn't you tell the real meaning of Christmas in the same Christmas play? Folks, we need to get back to the real meaning of what Christmas is all about. We need to quit arguing over, well, December the 25th is not his birthday anyhow. Who cares? If you are born again tonight, brothers and sisters, every day is Christmas to you. Bless God, because every day we get a gift. And if you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, you got one of the greatest gifts that a man could ever have. And that's the gift of salvation. And tonight I want to share with you the real meaning of Christmas. Number one, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world, after this baby child came, born in a manger in the town of Bethlehem. Bless God, as the Bible and the Old Testament prophesied that he would come. He came just like they prophesied that he would come. He came and at the age of 30, he began his ministry because Jesus Christ, uh, in the Jewish history, you could not be uh, uh, a priest or whatever. So there was a reason that he didn't start his ministry till he's 30 years old. But the prophets prophesied this and that Jesus Christ would die on the cross. And now we got this John three sixteen For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that who, I want you to highlight these are nuggets of God's word right that who, so ever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You say, well, how? Do I get this everlasting life? Ephesians 2, 8. Well, first of all, you've got to admit that you're a sinner. Romans 3, 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And here's the good part about At this Christmas, Jesus Christ, the real meaning of Christmas, He wants to give you the best gift that you ever get. Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself. It is a gift of God. He wants to give you that gift. And God said, if you accept that gift, hallelujah, if you'll just reach out and accept that gift, hallelujah, and accept it by faith, the Bible tells us if you'll do that, there's going to something that is going to happen in your life. And that's something that is going to happen in your life. It's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Not saying you're going to get perfect, but I'm saying that you're going to get loved. I'm saying that he wants to give you a gift, and I'm saying that he will change your whole outlook. Tonight, I want to ask you, if you would do that, I want you to just email me, revnat94gmail.com. We're not keeping a record of it, but we would just like to rejoice with you. And in fact, if you'll put your address uh, in this email, we'll even send you some material to help you on your uh, walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? We'll do that, folks. I, I We will love for you to do that. And now, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this a message tonight about the false god of Christmas. You don't like it, you know, whatever. Revmat94 at gmail.com. I want you to start listening. Pass the word around about our, our podcast. Uh, we are going to be first of the year. We're going to be, uh, we will be having more podcast than we than one once a week or every two weeks or whatever. We're going to start a series on prophecy. So we would love for you to stick with us. Hey, tell your friends about Nuggets of God's Word. Now, if you look us up and you put Nuggets of God's Word in it, you're going to have a bunch of podcasts comes up with 
uh, nuggets of God's Word. But if you'll put nuggets of God's Word, Reverend Nathaniel Nat Brown, you will find us. Folks, I want to say tonight, thank you for joining us. If you're in the Sumter, South Carolina,